This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and welcome. I'm Shannon Anderson. I'm the pastor of Peace Lutheran Church in Waldorf, Maryland, and I am so glad that you have joined us this morning for worship, whether you are joining us here in Waldorf or Charles County or in Germany or in Washington State or Virginia or North Carolina or someplace else, we are glad that we can be connected in this time. We are in month four of Corona time, uh, but we are also in God's time. A couple of weeks ago, I was talking to one of my friends who is black and who has been struggling with all that is going on. And she said, you know, joy is going to be my resistance. And so uh, today, as we come together in worship, no matter where you are in your life or what you are feeling, uh, I invite you uh, into joy. We have a beautiful choir anthem inviting God to build us up and uh, we will pray for you and with you and so may you in this time find some joy welcome to worship and now as we prepare for worship let us come before god and confess our sins lord we confess our day-to-day -day failure to be human lord we confess to you Lord, we confess that we often fail to love with all we have and are, often because we do not fully understand what loving means, often because we are afraid of risking ourselves. Lord, we confess to you. Lord, we cut ourselves off from each other and we erect barriers of division. Lord, we confess to you. Lord, we confess that by silences and ill-considered word, we have built up walls of prejudice. Lord, we confess that by selfishness and lack of sympathy, we have stifled generosity and left little time for others. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Help us to listen to your word of forgiveness, for we are very deaf. Come fill this moment and free us from our sin. Come, Holy Spirit. Hear the voice of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim release to the captives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I proclaim to you that your sins are forgiven and you are released. The joy of the Lord is your strength and the gift of the Holy Spirit are yours forever. Amen.
Now is the moment of grace. This is the hour of blessing. Today is the day of salvation. Here is the path to new life. Already joy is abounding and love is flowing. For, For this, this is, is the day, day that God, God is, is making. making. Let, Let us, us rejoice and sing. sing. God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy. Live according to it and grow in faith and hope and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. 
And for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruits and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Today I have a story for you. When Jesus wanted people to listen to him, wanted them to really listen, he told them stories. He told them stories because unlike facts or lectures or knowledge, uh, stories are like seeds in, in today's parable that are planted. And when they find root, uh, they become so much more than what they started with. They grow inside of you. So today, I have a story for you. Let anyone with ears to hear, listen. Miss Rumpheus, story and pictures by Barbara Cooney. To St. Nicholas, the patron saint of children, sailors, and maidens. The Lupin lady lives in a small house overlooking the sea. In between the rocks around her house grow blue and purple and rose-colored flowers. The Lupin lady is little and old, but she has not always been that way. I know. She is my great aunt, and she told me so. Once upon a time, she was a little girl named Alice who lived in a city by the sea. From the front stoop, she could see the wharves and the bristly mast of tall ships. Many years ago, her grandfather had come to America on a large sailing ship. Now he worked in the shop at the bottom of the house, making figureheads for the prows of ships and carving Indians out of wood to put in front of cigar stores. For Alice's grandfather was an artist. He painted pictures too of sailing ships and places across the sea. When he was very busy, Alice helped him put in the skies. In the evening, Alice sat on her grandfather's knee and listened to stories of faraway places. When he had finished, Alice would say, when I grow up, I too will go to faraway places. And when I grow old, I too will live beside the sea. That is all very well, little Alice, said her grandfather. But there is a third thing you must do. What is that? asked Alice. You must do something to make the world more beautiful, said her grandfather. All right, said Alice. But she did not know what that could be. In the meantime, Alice got up and washed her face and ate porridge for breakfast. She went to school and came home and did her homework. And pretty soon, she was grown up. Then my great aunt Alice set out to do the three things she had told her grandfather she was going to do. She left home and went to live in another city far from the sea and the salt air. There, she worked in a library dusting books and keeping them from getting mixed up and helping people find the ones they wanted. Some of the books told her about far away places. People called her Miss Rumpheus now. Sometimes she went to the conservatory in the middle of the park. When she stepped inside on a wintry day, the warm, moist air wrapped itself around her and the sweet smell of jasmine filled her nose. This is almost like a tropical isle, said Miss Rumpheus, but not quite. So Miss Rumpheus went to a real tropical island where people kept cockatoos and monkeys as pets. She walked on long beaches, picking up beautiful shells. One day she met the Bapa Raja, king of a fishing village. You must be tired, he said. Come into my house and rest. So Miss Rumpheus went in and met the Bapa Raja's wife. The Bapa Raja himself fetched a green coconut and cut a slice off the top so that Miss Rumpheus could drink the coconut water inside. Before she left, the Bapa Raja gave her a beautiful mother-of-pearl shell 
on which he had painted a bird of paradise and the words, you will always remain in my heart. You will always remain in mine too, said Miss Rumpheus. My great aunt Alice, Miss R my great aunt, Miss Alice Rumpheus, climbed tall mountains where the snow never melted. She went through jungles and across deserts. She saw lions playing and kangaroos jumping. And everywhere she went, she made friends that she would never forget. Finally, she came to the land of the lotus eaters, and there, getting off a camel, she hurt her back. What a foolish thing to do, said Miss Rumpheus. Well, I have certainly seen far away places. Maybe it is time to find my place by the sea. And it was, and she did. From the porch of her new house, Miss Rumpheus watched the sun come up. She watched it cross the heavens and sparkle on the water, and she saw it set in glory in the evening. She started a little garden among the rocks that surrounded her house, and she planted a few flower seeds in the stony ground. Miss Rumpheus was almost perfectly happy. But there is still one more thing I have to do, she said. I have to do something to make the world more beautiful. But what? The world is already pretty nice, she thought, looking out over the ocean. The next spring, Miss Rumpheus was not very well. Her back was bothering her again, and she had to stay in bed most of the time. The flowers she had planted the summer before had come up and bloomed in spite of the stony ground. She could see them from her bedroom window, blue and purple and rose-colored. Lupins said Miss Rufius with satisfaction. I have always loved lupins the best. I wish I could plant more seeds this summer so that I could have still more flowers next year. But she was not able to. After a hard winter, spring came. Miss Rumpheus was feeling much better. Now she could take walks again. One afternoon, she started to go up and over the hill where she had not been in a long time. I don't believe my eyes when she, cr she cried when she got to the top. For there, on the other side of the hill, was a large patch of blue and purple and rose-colored lupins. It was the wind, she said as she knelt in delight. It was the wind that brought the seeds from my garden here, and the birds must have helped. Then Miss Rumpheus had a wonderful idea. She hurried home and got out her seed catalogs. She sent off to the very best seed house for five bushels of lupin seed. All that summer, Miss Rumpheus, her pockets full of seeds, wandered over fields and headlands sowing lupins. She scattered seeds along the highways and down the country lanes. She flung handfuls of them around the schoolhouse and back of the church. She tossed them into hollows and along stone walls. Her back didn't hurt her any more at all. Now, some people called her that crazy old lady. The next spring, there were lupins everywhere. Fields and hillsides were covered with blue and purple and rose-colored flowers. They bloomed along the highways and down the lanes. Bright patches lay around the schoolhouse and at the back of the church. Down in the hollows and along the stone walls grew the beautiful flowers. Miss Rumpheus had done the third, the most difficult thing of all. My great aunt, Miss Alice Rumpheus, is very old now. Her hair is very white. Every year there are more and more lupins. Now they call her the lupin lady. Sometimes my friends stand with me outside her gate, curious to see the old, old lady who planted the fields of lupins. When she invites us in, they come slowly. They think she is the oldest woman in the world. Often she tells us stories of far away places. When I grow up, I tell her, I too will go to far away places and come home to live by the sea. That is all very well, little Alice, says my aunt, 
but there is a third thing you must do. What is that? I ask. You must do something to make the world more beautiful. All right, I say. But I do not know yet what that can be. Let anyone with ears to hear listen and go and plant beautiful seeds. And now together with the whole church, let us confess our faith by the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Praying separately in our homes, yet united in the Spirit, let us together intercede for all the needs of the world. In response to each bid, you are invited to offer your own prayers silently or aloud, and to conclude each petition with the words, your mercy is everlasting. We pray for our congregation and for all the churches in neighborhood. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your mercy is everlasting. We pray for missionaries and for newly planted congregations around the world. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your mercy is everlasting. We pray for those for whom growth in faith is difficult. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your mercy is everlasting. We pray for farms and fields that are devastated by drought. O oh God, rain down your mercies on us. Your mercy is everlasting. We pray for all animals in search of water. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your mercy is everlasting. We pray for everyone who is suffering from heat. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your mercy is everlasting. We pray for peace throughout the world, especially in the Middle East. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your mercy is everlasting. We pray for the government of our country, state, and county. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your mercy is everlasting. We pray for our society to be purged of racism. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your mercy is everlasting. We pray for the thousands who each day are contracting the coronavirus. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your mercy is everlasting. We pray for those without jobs or health care. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your mercy is everlasting. We pray for medical workers and researchers. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your mercy is everlasting. We pray for all who are sick. O oh God, rain down your mercy upon us. We pray for all who are burdened with anxiety and depression. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your mercy is everlasting. We pray 
each of us for ourselves. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your mercy is everlasting. We thank God for Nathan Söderblom, who we commemorate today, and for all who have died in faith. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your mercy is everlasting. O oh, merciful God, receive these prayers and grant us your spirit of peace and joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. O God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. We long for the day when we will be gathered at your table, sharing again the gifts of bread and wine, your true body and blood poured out for us. In this time when we are apart, we trust in the grace that comes to us through the gift of your word. May this grace strengthen our bonds and open our hearts, that we might proclaim your steadfast love and be agents of your reconciling justice in this place and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. receive this blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit, Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship this morning. We were so glad to be together in spirit. A couple of quick announcements. Uh, first of all, today at 8.30, we hosted our first in outdoor worship in the parking lot at Peace Lutheran Church, and we celebrated the sacrament of Holy Communion and uh, just like with the sower whose seeds fell on good soil, there was an abundance. And so we have elements that have been blessed and prayed over. And if you weren't able to be there and you would like to receive Holy Communion in your home, please send me an email and I will uh, do a porch drive by to drop off the elements with a simple liturgy and instruction so you can be uh, connected to our community in that way. Also, uh, we continue next week with our adult forum, Digging into Scripture, 9 a.m. on Sunday mornings. And next Tuesday is our week two of our book group, Raising White Kids. Uh, it's been a great discussion so far. If you need the Zoom information for that, please 
look in sharing peace or let me know. Have a great week and we will see you next week.